Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm still kind of jamming from all that fun music that we just heard. Um, but we're so excited that you're here tonight. And we can't wait to share insight about what it's like to start your career at Capital Group and also answer all of your questions. So I'd first like to start off by just thanking the team at Way Up for just a tremendous partnership. We're really excited to um, host our second recruiting event on your platform this evening. So for the next hour, we're going to provide our insight to some of the opportunities that we have for um, available currently for our early career talent. And we also will hear from the four business leaders that are here on the call tonight who will share their personal stories with you and also talk about some of the openings that they have on their team today. Uh, you'll also see that there are several uh, recruiters who are also attending this session. So they'll also be answering any questions that come through the chat. And so from there, we're going to answer a few of your pre-submitted questions that we received from you. Um, and then we'll also transition to an open Q&A session. Um, we're really excited to get to know you. So we just want to encourage you to ask questions that come to your mind, and we will do our best to answer. Um, before we introduce our speakers, I'm just going to start by sharing a little bit of insight about Capital Group um, as a backdrop to what you're going to hear from some of our business leaders. So first and foremost, we are 90 years old. We're a privately held company. We're home of the American funds, which are mutual funds. You may have heard of that. Um, we're one of the world's largest investment management organizations with $2.2 trillion of assets under management. Our mission is to improve people's lives through successful investing. We offer a fantastic work culture, which you will hear about, uh, compensation and opportunities that empower our associates to build successful long-term careers. And you will hear several of these great examples from our panel of speakers. We also encourage you after this event to connect with us individually on LinkedIn or on our Capital Group Facebook or Instagram pages. Um, our Instagram handle is Life at Capital Group. So with that, I'm going to hand over the mic to Suzanne Yem for her introduction. Thanks, Amber. Um, hello, everybody. It's very, it's awesome to be here, actually. And I thank this group for inviting me to speak and, um, and be a part of this panel. Uh, my name is Suzanne Yim, and I have been with Capital for 21 years. I just celebrated my 21st year on the 9th, so I'm officially 21 years old. Out of this 90 year, when you said that, Amber, I was like, oh my gosh, we're 90 years old, and I've been here 21 years of that, so this is um, unbelievable to me, because I still feel like I'm 21 years old. <laughs> I started um, at Capital in a client services role, which is the department I will be talking about today, um, and back in 2000. And I have, um, I would say, moved around at Capital quite a bit. Um, and I'll kind of give a, a picture of my journey here. I was in client services for about eight years, and five years of that, I was a manager in the department. Um, then I decided I wanted to try something different, and so I was able to shift over to our project office um, and was a project manager for quite a time. Um, and from there, I really, you know, I had a goal to become a senior manager or um, vice president, which is my role currently today. And in order for me to do that, I really wanted to develop other skills, um, learn about the business, um, the entire business of capital. So I moved to a role in global finance, which is very different than client services, as you can imagine. But I um, was able to obtain a role where I was able to um, manage a group of analysts and um, had a wonderful time learning about sort of that back office portion of Capital Group. Um, and from there, I decided I really needed some to learn about the people aspect. So I became a business partner with an HR and um, was able to spend some time supporting a business group, looking at all of the aspects of people management. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, I'm ready to go. I think I want to apply for that senior manager VP role in about four and a half, I'm going to say near five years ago, um, I was able to interview and obtain my goal. So here I am in our client services department as a senior manager. And some might ask, 
why have you stayed at Capital for 21 years? Um, that's a long time for anybody. And I think these days it's um, somewhat uncommon. Um, but here's what I would say. Capital, first and foremost, has the most amazing people. Um, I would not have been here. I would not be here 21 years if I did not um, enjoy the folks that I worked with and was not challenged by them every single day. No one day is the same as the next. And um, honestly, I'm challenged and, and not ever bored. Um, the second reason is that we focus our attention on associate development. Um, we understand that many associates come into capital with goals. And um, sometimes they're not exactly sure what those goals are. They're kind of coming in saying, okay, what do I want to really do as a career? But I need to start somewhere. I want to come in and I want to learn about the company. I want to learn about the industry. Um, and so there is a great deal of um, focus on mentorship. There's a great deal of focus on development, developing skills and competencies, um, which is one of the, the really great things about capital that I've benefited from because of all of these moves that I've been able to um, do within, within the company. Um, and then the third reason is um, we have a wonderful community of associates that focus on their passions and interests that's not just work related. Um, I have benefited from meeting so many other capital associates in and outside of my location through a capital community called LEAP. And I am one of the leaders within that community. And that stands for Leading and Engaging Asian Professionals. We have over 30 different communities that focus on associate interest and passion and um, is one of the great things that make up our culture at Capital. So without going in too deep, I will stop there um, or else I could talk for hours and hours about how great we are. Um, I, I, let me talk a little bit about the open roles in my department and, and what is client services. So client services is where I, I like to say um, where you can come into an investment firm and have direct contact with our external customers. So our financial professionals and our investors post sale. So they've gone through the sales process and they've come in to say, okay, we want to work with you. We want to put our trust and our money with you. And then we help them through the process of, um, you know, the different life events and transactions that they might need to um, do over the years. And we're here along the way to be able to help them. Um, we're looking for individuals who want to help people. Um, who want to know more about the industry, who are problem solvers. There is a great deal of complex um, information that we deal with. So we need folks who are independent problem solvers, but also work really well within a team because all of our associates are on a team of eight to 12 associates on one team. Um, and they collaborate and uh, work together to come up with best solutions for situations. Um, you don't have to have a specific degree or industry experience to start in this department. Um, we look for sometimes some related skills around service or um, problem solving or being able to collaborate, um, nimble learning, things of that nature. But a specific degree is not required. Um, we also ex offer extensive training. So all of our associates come in and they go through, um, I would say, on average, it's about four months in aggregate of training to learn all about our product, our customers, um, and our services within Capital Group. So you would not be able to pay for this. This is it's an amazing opportunity to learn about what we offer. Um, currently, we are going to be opening a role in San Antonio, Texas, which is amazing office in our San Antonio um, area. And we're going to be opening that up, I think, in about a couple of weeks. And Amber has said that she's going to be sending additional information to all of you if you're interested. Um, but in addition, we have offices across the country. So I am located in Irvine, California, which is Southern California. And we also have an office in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Hampton Roads, Virginia. So across those four sites, we continue to hire in this role, I want to say four to six times a year. Um, so if you're ever curious what's coming up next in this role across which location, um, you will be able to find us um, on way up probably four to six times a year. 
So um, I will, I think, conclude with just a couple of things around um, culture and workplace flexibility. Um, so as I'm sure you all have um, experienced over the past two years, a lot of companies are doing really great things with um, trying out different options for work at home, work in the office, hybrid, whatnot. Um, we do offer a wonderful work from home slash office option. Um, and there are a variety of options. So we have anything from work from the office two to four days a month to work in the office full time. It just really depends on the business need and what your focus is. But those options are available to all our associates in our department. Uh, so I won't go into any more detail there. I want to give others the opportunity to speak, but it was really great to meet all of you, and I hope that you have additional questions that you will be asking, um, and I'm happy to get things that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate you kicking us off there, and, and what a great intro and start to this. And uh, I echo a lot of what Suzanne uh, said, and that's a big thank you. Thank you to everybody on this call. Thank you for your interest in the opportunity and learning more about Capital Group, and we hope to have a real robust dialogue uh, as we go through. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with um, you know kind of three things that I want to spend some time on. Is just tell you a little bit about my story and my journey here at Capital. I'll talk a little bit about the department that I'm in and the open roles that we'll have uh, uh, coming soon or currently open. So I'll start with me and my story. Again, I'm Richard Salinas. I've been here at Capital for 16 years, and uh, that brings the old adage of time flies when you're having fun. Uh, and it truly does. I can't believe it's been 16 years. I'm, I'm located here in San Antonio. Uh, all 16 years have been in the San Antonio office. Um, and prior to joining Capital, I was in a sales role. I wasn't in the industry. So uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, the sales department that I'm in and the, the kind of the meaning behind that. But before uh, and even before that, I went to Stephen F. Austin in uh, Nacogdoches, Texas, and I have a degree in management. So uh, you don't necessarily have a degree in management to manage, but it just kind of worked out for me. So, um, you know, from there, uh, I, you know, I mentioned that uh, I'm not from the industry. I'm in the sales group, which we're part of the distribution effort here at Capital. Uh, but I think that's a testament to our culture here at Capital and being willing to to bring people on that demonstrate skill sets and 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 the need uh, to to be or the desire to be a part of this group. Uh, and we learn the business uh, and we teach and we train much like what Suzanne uh, mentioned before. We have a focus on training. We have a focus on development uh, to help people to be successful. Uh, so uh, part of my journey is I worked as an internal wholesaler, uh, one of the roles that we are hiring for uh, for a little, almost two years, say, and, and from there I managed the role directly. I moved into a manager role and was able to work and coach and lead and uh, our associates in that format. Uh, and again, coming back to the development theme, I spent uh, time uh, thinking about my business acumen and learning more about our business and took on other roles uh, in one international accounts department uh, that's more the business to business and working with the back offices of the broker dealers we were able to engage. Uh, learned a lot, uh, came back to the sales side and managed uh, a sales division uh, for a little while. And now my current responsibilities are as a national site sales manager, and I'm responsible for our cross-channel sales divisions in San Antonio and Indianapolis, uh, and have a great team that I get to work with uh, that uh, makes it really exciting. Um, so that's a little bit about my story, and, and, and I've heard or I've had people ask me, what does it take to progress at Capital? Uh, I don't think there's any magic answer or bullet to that, but what I would say is it, it boils down to three things for me is, you know, having determination, uh, and accountability for your results and what you put into the time uh, at work uh, with a dose of humility, uh, seeking out mentorship. Uh, and the really important part of that is being willing to, to seek out feedback and apply that feedback. And the thing about capital is feedback is intended to help and help you grow and develop, uh, and then you have to apply it. Uh, and then most importantly is patience uh, is uh, applied to that. So I think those are a few things that if I think about what it takes to progress here at Capital, those are a few of the things that, that we would talk about. So let me spend a little bit of time about our department. Uh, you know, I my particular group is referred to as site sales, and we're a part of the distribution effort here at Capital. 
For those of you that don't know, we have we represent the uh, capital group and the American funds, and we distribute or we uh, engage financial advisors. We don't go direct to the client uh, in, in the simplest form. So we engage financial advisors. We help to educate them on, on the mutual funds and the SMAs and the products that we have available to help their clients meet their goals. So as Amber mentioned at the beginning, our mission is to help improve or is our mission is to improve people's lives through successful investing. And that's really a big part of what my group does is to help raise and retain assets for capital. Uh, and the way we do that is by engaging financial advisors. It is this is a sales department, but I would encourage all of you to think about sales in a little bit of a different way. We take a very consultative approach where we're engaging that financial advisor to learn more about the advisor, their business, and the client so that we can best help them understand where we fit in their practice. Uh, we also partner, we have an external sales force uh, who we partner with to help in that distribution effort. Um, it's a very, it's a fun and engaging department. Uh, it'll challenge you to grow uh, and develop as a professional in this industry. And most importantly, um, you know, all of those things are great, but the work has to have meaning behind it. And we really spend a lot of time here at Capital talking about how we impact investors' lives by helping them reach their goals. And that is at the center of every decision that we make is putting the investor first to make sure that we're doing right for our investors. Now, a little bit about the open roles that we have. We have a number of different ways to, to join the site sales group. Um, for our early career openings, we have a program that's referred to as Slate. So for those of you coming right out of school, this is our sales learning, agility, and training experience. It's an immersive experience where uh, we bring you on board and there's a year long program where you have the opportunity to get licensed. Uh, you have the opportunity to meet uh, uh, you know, associates in the organization you have an opportunity to learn uh, all about the business. You learn from the service component to the sales component. And it, it's a really interactive experience to help you be able to onboard into this industry, into this organization. So great, great program. Uh, we'll have openings uh, for our Indianapolis office and our San Antonio office. The other roles that we have openings for are our internal wealth specialists. And that's the role I was referring to. That's the role that I started in, uh, and that's the role that I have responsibilities for. Uh, our internal wealth specialists are the individuals who uh, are the ones engaging financial advisors, and we do that primarily over the phone, uh, and we engage financial advisors to really learn about their business and, and help them understand how to use uh, our products. And so we have openings in San Antonio and Indianapolis for that. If you think about those first two roles, uh, I would tell you um, – if you're wanting to enter into the industry, the Slate program is a great way to start, especially if you're coming right out of school. Internal Wealth Specialist, if you like that consultative, that engaging people, asking questions, and really helping them understand and position things to help them uh, help benefit clients, that's another great way to, to think about that role. The third role that we have that's open in our Indianapolis and San Antonio office are the sales support coordinators. Um, I would tell you that the keyword there is the coordinator. If you like the challenge of logistics, if you like the coordination, uh, what this job does is it's very important. Uh, it, and let me give you a little background. We operate in a team format. So we have external wholesalers who are out in the field engaging financial advisors face to face. Our internal wealth specialists partner with them, but they, they cover the advisors over the phone. And then our sales support coordinators are a part of that team. That's a three-person team. And that sales support coordinator is responsible for helping to get the, the wholesaler, the external wholesaler, into the offices of the financial advisor. So there's a sales component to it, and there's also the logistics component of helping manage calendar and, and getting people into the meetings that they should be in. So those are the roles that we have. Uh, as I think about uh, kind of following Suzanne's lead here, you know, our culture uh, in, in the sales, site sales, and our future or, or kind of remote remote work options, uh, from a culture standpoint, I know I would encourage you all to, as I mentioned before, think about sales in a different way. Our culture is, um, it, it sales can be thought of as, hey, this cutthroat type environment, that is not capital at all. Uh, we have a very collaborative uh, environment and in, in, in engagement uh, amongst the associates when we're in the site and we're engaging one another. And the best way I can bring that to life for you is we often have fun little competitions, and it's not um, it's not a crazy thing to see the, the associates working together to help each other 
do better in the competitions, right? We'll have presentation competitions. We'll have little different things that we do on the floor to keep the environment lively. Uh, and so we don't compete at the sake of one another. It's really uh, an effort to continue to drive our, our success and, and, and meet our mission. Um, so that's our, a little bit about our culture. Happy to go much more into that. Uh, and then lastly, I just talk about the remote work options. So uh, much like what Suzanne mentioned, we have some flexibility. Uh, we are going to offer flexible work schedules where we'll be in the office a minimum of two days a week. You do have the flexibility of being in the office and full time. Uh, and part of that is, is you know, our, our sales group uh, really benefits from being around one another in that camaraderie and the learning from one another and part of that development component. So uh, I'll, I'll stop there if you have any questions about that, but uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you all for being here, and I will transition to our next panelist. All right, Richard. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so I'll take it from here. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Samuel Amalu. I've been here at Capital Group for about eight months. So relatively new compared to my, my colleagues, Richard and, and Suzanne. But a um, little bit about me. I started my career as an engineer. I'll probably say the first half of my career I was doing hardcore engineering within uh, the telecommunications industry before I decided to go back and get my MBA. Um, after my MBA, I really ventured into the second half of my career, which was mostly consulting, working with a lot of Fortune 500 uh, clients uh, as they thought about how to leverage their technology um, to, to improve their business. And so really enjoyed my time as a consultant, but uh, felt that um, I wanted a little bit more. I wanted uh, to get closer to or get more intimate um, with, with one company. And so uh, the company that I chose was Vanguard. Um, took a, worked as a finance director in Vanguard, supporting their investment management group in a corporate finance uh, division. Just doing your traditional um, FP&A uh, work and did that for a while before um, this opportunity opened up for me. And um, I'm from Ohio, from the East Coast, um, but recently moved my family um, to Southern California to take this new role. And in, in this role that I'm in, I lead a team of FP&A professionals that are very much so focused and aligned to the six business areas that make up a capital group. And um, what's really exciting about this role is, you know, it, it, it's pretty broad in nature, but um, a lot of the associates on my team um, have the opportunity to really partner with our internal business leaders um, and, and assist them as they're making strategic decisions that are going to guide what we're going to do today and in the future. And so um, organizations like our distribution channel um, that Richard's is in and, and HR that Suzanne is in, we partner very closely with our internal uh, business leaders, um, again, to, to work side by side um, and infor to help inform some of the strategic decisions um, that they may be making. And I'll just say it's a very exciting time to be in global finance at Capital Group. Um, like I mentioned, we, we have the opportunity to really contribute in a significant way as we contemplate um, how we're going to operate in this new normal, um, in this, um, this, this market of increased volatility with additional competition that we're faced with uh, across all our business areas. Um, it, it's, it's really a great time to um, think through and be a part of some of the problem solving some pretty major um, challenges that the organization is contemplating and to be involved in a meaningful way. And so for me, um, I've only been here eight months, but some of the things that I've seen that really resonate with me is um, about the organization is really its commitment to investors. Uh, you can really see that commitment reflected in how we work, the way we, the way the organization um, manages it fun, its funds and prices its funds um, and really how we steward our expenses. Um, you know, the, the, there's a very thoughtful approach that goes into, um, you know, managing our expenses and it's really a reflection of, of the care um, and the focus on, on the investors that are, that are purchasing our, our products. Um, the other thing that really resonates with me the most is the people. Um, I think some of my colleagues mentioned that as well. 
Um, I've come to observe uh, the, the inclusive nature um, that my peers, uh, the leadership um, takes to make sure that they're taking all perspectives into consideration. And so there's clear awareness that, you know, the, the broader our perspective, the more input we can take in, the better um, informed we can, we can be, the, the better decisions we can make as a group. And it's very much so reflected in, in how we work and that really resonates. Um, the other one is diver diversification. Um, so obviously, you know, the, the approach that we take to diversification has supported the organization and, and the success and the products that we've had. Um, but again, I mentioned the multiple perspectives. Um, you see that in, in, in how, we, how we work very much so. And so um, a little bit more about the department. So global finance is made up of uh, a number of departments to include the financial planning and, anal and analysis team um, that, that I'm leading. Um, our mandate essentially is to support the business in their long range planning, uh, the annual budget, um, allocating those budgets across the organization, and then doing the reporting and the deep analysis to help inform um, how we're allocating that. Uh, we want to make sure that we're allocating our resources uh, to the initiatives and to the things that are going to realize the most value for our investors. Um, and so in a nutshell, that's, that is our mandate. That's the focus of, of the team within FP&A, uh, financial planning and analysis. I have a variety of roles uh, within my organization um, at the moment. Um, the, one, the one that I'm looking for that, that I'll share here is the financial analyst role. Uh, really very much so looking for some entry level um, analysts uh, to come in and support our organization. Um, you know, I'll say that uh, if you are an independent thinker, uh, if you're great at collaborating with peers um, and, and taking a partnership approach and working with stakeholders, then we're looking for you. Um, we are very much so looking for individuals and analysts um, who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty on broad data sets, um, who enjoys uh, really thinking through information and data that they see, and then have the creative chops to be able to turn it into intelligence, okay, and package it up in a manner that can inform um, decisions and senior leader senior leaders within our organization. And so, um, independent thinkers, collaborators, um, taking a, a partnership approach. If you enjoy doing that, I'm very much so looking uh, for you. Um, Relocation benefits, we certainly have them. The, the roles that I have at the moment are primarily in Irvine and Southern California. Um, and so there are relocation benefits involved. From a remote um, standpoint, uh, very similar to Richard, uh, you have the flexibility to work three days remote, two days in the office. Um, and so there's uh, meaningful amounts of, of flexibility that's afforded to, to you. And, at the end of the day, uh, it's all about getting the job done. You know, if if you're if you're focused on your work and you're you you can operate independently, um, then you you're you're like they're going to be very effective um, in in this role in these roles that we have here. And so, uh, with that, I very much so look forward to your questions. Um, and so feel free. Um, but I will pass it on to Stacy. Thank you, Sam. Um, thank you all for being here, and it's it's tough to follow these three um, colleagues of mine, but I'd love to, before we get to your questions, really share a little bit of my own career journey, share a little bit about my department and the roles that we have open as well. So Stacy Perone, really happy to be here. Um, I feel very passionately about early career because I once was an early career, so I'll tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I've been at Capital 18 years. And I graduated from University of California here in Irvine in an anthropology degree. My graduation was on a Saturday. My first interview with Capital was on a Monday. And two weeks later, I was starting my first job out of college. So I definitely have that passion for fostering early career growth um, because it's my journey as well. 
Um, I actually started currently my my department now is in investment operations, but and I've been here for two years as a business solution design manager. I didn't start there. I started actually in client services with Suzanne. Um, so started an entry level role that's actually the same one that she's promoting. Um, and I really loved capital as an opportunity just because I was less decided about what I wanted to do for my career. Um, I have throughout my career in capital in my 18 years, I've worked in client services. Um, I began managing people a couple of years into um, client services roles. So I've managed client services teams. I've managed a workforce management and forecasting team that did all the planning for the call centers and service centers. Um, and more recently, I made another transition and now I work at a, I'm based out of the downtown LA office in investment operations, doing a completely different thing, um, but managing a team of really great business solution design analysts. Um, so I think my journey really shows how much capital fosters talent and growth of early careers. You really get to explore. Um, so that's one thing as advice I'd have for all of you is really be open. Um, I'll give you an example. When I started my career here at Capital, I never wanted to be a manager. I thought, no way, that's not for me. But as I really started to engage with leaders who believed in me and my potential and really started to assess what are the things I really enjoy? Oh, I really enjoy engaging people. I really enjoy goal setting and I really enjoy organizationally how I can help a team succeed, how, how I can help everyone succeed. It really changed my path. Um, and I've been kind of pursuing exploration all throughout my career. And it's led me to some really interesting things I never thought that um, I'd be interested in, but I, I absolutely love what I do now. Um, so a little bit about my journey um, and probably what's kept me here for 18 years, I've been able to explore different career paths while here. And I've worked in three different offices um, in my time, so all within Southern California, but um, have moved around quite a bit. So just sharing a little bit about my department. As I mentioned, I'm part of the investment operations department here at Capital. Um, it's a great department and it really is almost the backbone of what we do and how mutual funds are made. Um, so once in a, a portfolio manager makes an investment conviction, investment operations really turns that in to a mutual fund. So investment operations, a diverse group, we have about 800 associates globally in different locations, um, including Singapore, London, um, and Hampton Roads, Virginia, and Southern California in three offices in Southern California. Um, we are a diverse group of folks who do everything after that investment conviction is made. So we help with portfolio construction, we help with order management. Um, there are teams that focus on trade operations, placing trades, um, really working with the investment group to help um, kind of bring their convictions into investments. Um, then we also have some of our core operations folks um, who do a lot of the fund accounting and valuation of our funds, really pricing funds and making them into um, striking the nav and, and um, creating mutual funds that are consumable to market and into retail. Um, we also have a diverse group of folks who do results. So a, a lot of the folks in results really kind of take those investment convictions and really report on those results and really put that out also. So a lot of the things that you see on our website um, are the, the fruits of the labor of some of the folks within investment operations. Um, it's a really diverse group. I love working with them. In my specific department, I um, do business solution design and act almost like an in-house consultant to investment operations. We support all of those teams in an end-to-end um, kind of support function where we help with projects and strategic initiatives and make sure that the solutions we're designing really fit for all of the departments that work in harmony with each other. So really great diverse team of folks, um, really detail oriented and very different and diverse types of focuses. Um, the positions that we have open, um, you know, what's great about investment operations as well as we really foster that early career journey. So one of the open positions um, that I'm excited about is the summer associate program that's really targeted for folks still in school. And that allows you 
a little bit of an insight into what it's like to, to work full-time here at Capital, but more in a summer program. Um, absolutely great program, and you get to be placed in one of those diverse teams that I mentioned to help make that mutual fund come to life. Um, we have locations here in Southern California in our LA office, in our Irvine, California office, and also in Norfolk, Virginia. So definitely look into that summer program if you're still in school and kind of want that entry point in. Um, we also have positions in Southern California related to our core operations area that we just talked about. Um, so absolutely um, some great positions open as well as LA. We have some great roles that support our investment group as well, helping with portfolio construction and, and um, implementation. So. Um, a lot of what my colleagues said about um, remote work and what those options are, flexibility, um, are the same in investment operations. We have, very similar to Richard and Sam, we have um, remote work options for three days a week at home and two days a week in the office. Again, it's really to foster that culture that we have. So. A lot of my colleagues mentioned collaborative team environment, working independently, investment operations is the same. A lot of the structure that we have in investment operations is individualized work as an analyst or an associate, but you are doing that collaboratively in a team. Um, so we really believe in that strong culture um, of working together and collaboratively. Um, I, I think that's Hit. I, I will add one more thing, and, and some of my colleagues did share this uh, about why capital. Um, I think Sam had said that you know we're really focused on what's good for the investor. One thing I'll add to that that it's kind of bent on the people too. And everybody said people pretty much in their answers. I really do feel like capital has good people, and and in addition to that, capital really takes care to invest in their people in various ways. Mentorship is huge. Um, training and development is huge. I'm kind of the case study for that. Um, but also the community that Suzanne mentions. Um, I also am a leader in one of our employee resource groups for LGBTQ plus individuals. And that is just a great community. We have done amazing things to help with visibility, with help with helping people feel like they can be their authentic selves in our environment and that's celebrated. Um, so I've been really proud of that, of our outreach in our community and the connection across those communities um, and the events that we have to really let people feel like they can be their authentic selves here at work. So that's one thing I'll add about why capital. Um, but I know you all may have questions. so. Um, I will end my presentation, my intro here, and um, turn it over to if there's any questions for the panel. Thanks, Stacey. So hi, everyone. My name is Parveen Kumar, and I've been at Capital for the last six years. I work very closely with Amber as a part of the recruiting team, and I can say that we are so thrilled and excited to see each of you here that have joined um, for our Way Up event. We've got some really great questions in the queue, so I encourage you to continue submitting your questions so that we can get them answered for you. And I'm glad to see one brave um, attendee raise their hand. So I think we will go ahead and pivot over straight to um, our attendee raising the hand, and then we'll go back over to the Q and A. Um, yes, I have a question for the the finance individual. What does success look like in your position, and how do you measure it? All right, uh, Jose. Well, thanks for the question. Um, you know, so within global finance, what does success look like and how do we measure it? So I hit on some of it. You know, I talked a little bit about um, independence, collaboration and business partnership. And so from an independent standpoint, um, maybe maybe I could spend some time there. You know, we, we really are looking for I think analysts that are very successful in this role um, are independent thinkers. You know, they're able to really examine data and look at it very objectively and draw their own conclusions. And so uh, they're able to um, take, uh, you know, some of what they've learned about, you know, the business area, about the organization, about the industry, um and cross that against whatever data that they may be analyzing and then come up with um, an independent view um 
you know, I think the analysts that are successful in these roles, they are opinionated. Okay, they're able to come in, um, look at a complex um, situation, um, you know, examine it, assess it, and make an opinion. You know, and that opinion is informed, um, and it's intelligent, and it's um, actionable. Um, and we can use it to um, engage um, business partners in a very, very meaningful way. And so, um, you know, again, that independent thinking, um, being able to, to have an opinion on complex topics is, is an important um, piece to it. Um, the other piece is collaborating and, and partnering with business clients and peers, uh, your ability to really come in and um, credentialize yourself and build relationships. Um, the best way to source information and data within your organization is through the relationships and the connections that you make. Um, and so being able to navigate the organization and establish those relationships are important. So how do we measure it? Um, you know, much of it is subjective. I think you'll see a lot of it in um, the engagement. So are your business partners reaching out and engaging you? Um, if they have a problem or if they have a question about their finances, are they picking up the phone and calling, you know, the associate or the an analyst or they're calling someone else? I think if if the analyst is is, is the go to for that business partner, I think that's a, a good sign, a good indicator um, that they're adding value. Um, the other obvious way is is incremental value within our P&L. Um, and so the P&Ls that we manage and that we steward on behalf of the business, being able to tie some of the recommendations and the work that you're doing directly to um, movements in the p and is another uh, way that we, we measure some of that success. But I'll say just those are some of the ways that we, we think about uh, what good looks like uh, within finance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Thank you for this uh, opportunities. And uh, my question is like, um, I'm about to get my MBA degree uh, uh, by December and I don't have really experience in terms of like <clears throat> finance. So I was just wondering, uh, uh, is there any way that, you know, uh, I can get a job as an entry level financial analyst? If so, like what, uh, what, I have to do in order to be better as a financial analyst, entry entry level financial analyst. Like, what are the suggestions? Okay, I, I think I, I'll, I'll take that one again. Um, so, so thanks for your question. First off, I think it's a great step that you're taking to get your MBA. Um, I think the MBA is going to give you a broad perspective of the economy, um, number one, and and how um, capital markets. Um, um, relate to, to the economy. And so I think that that perspective is going to be really helpful coming in. I would encourage you, if you're thinking about a, a role within global finance, um, you know, to really lean into your corporate finance courses, your accounting courses. Um, you know, I think both of those classes will, um, teach you some of the fundamentals, uh, of finance. Um, how to calculate uh, net present value in an NPV, how to build um, an economic model that uh, looks at cash flows, uh, measuring revenues against expenses, um, and, and, and the mechanics that goes into some of the analysis that underpin it's a lot of what we do. Um, so I would say those two classes, which I think are core to most MBA programs, um, will, will give you a good foundation. Um, the, the other one is maybe some of the softer skills, um, you know, all the, all of your networking, uh, events, um, definitely make sure that you go out of your way to brush up on your networking skills. Um, finance is not all numbers. Um, again, there's a huge business partner component to these roles, um, you know, many of us have backgrounds in consulting. Um, I do, Richard talked a lot about, you know, taking a consultative approach within sales, you know, seeing a lot of head nods from my peers. So being able to, th those soft skills are very important. Um, and so um, in addition to the accounting and corporate finance, 
really leaning into some of those softer uh, skills is going to be important as well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. I'm going to go ahead and pivot over to our q and um, So for the panelists, if any of you want to take this next question, what services do you tend to see that is the most important or the most in demand for a client at Capital Group? Let me repeat that. What services do you tend to see that is the most in demand for a client at Capital Group? Thank you for the question. And I want I don't know if I'm understanding the question correctly, but I can try to interpret and answer it from my point of view um, from client services. Um, so, you know, clients, at least from my perspective, um, their needs vary. And it varies between life events. It varies between market um, fluctuate, fluctuation, volatility. Um, and what we try to do in client services is to ensure we are prepared for the variety of needs that our clients face um, through, it, it throughout um, all of the sort of seasons, I would say that, that um, you know, us as people kind of go through as we are living our lives and, and needing to um, think through um, making changes to our investments and, and just money in general. So um, specifically, I, I would say in our department today, what's trending is unfortunately um, has a lot to do with what's happening in our um, environment, which is COVID. And, um, you know, I specifically in my department, which is a phone unit, um, we're getting a lot of calls um, about the situations our clients are facing, our investors are facing with having to deal with um, this awful pandemic. So, you know, we are not only trying to look at transactionally how we can help, but we're also looking at from a life event and life change perspective, how can we ensure our customers have everything they need to make informed decisions about their investments. I hope that kind of gets at what the question was, but if it didn't, please, um, others feel free to jump in panelists um, and let me know if there's a follow-up to that. Yeah, Suzanne, I'll, I'll take another angle to that. And it, it, it depends on the client and who the client is. And so from a client services standpoint, you're dealing with the end investor. From us on the pre-sale side in the site sales group, we're dealing with the financial advisor who is our client. And a lot of our conversations center around uh, kind of three main topics is practice management. So helping an advisor with, hey, what are some of the tips and, and, and um, you know, best practices, if you will, of some top advisors out in the industry and how to help them with practice management. We have a lot of great content to help advisors with that. Um, you know, the other thing is the investment management aspect of it. We, I talked a lot about our solutions and products that we have available for financial advisors to use with their clients, and it's really helping to educate them and train them on how to use those things. Uh, and then the other is around, you know, client acquisition, um, and it's also just around how to best really think about presenting and helping clients through particular situations. So, uh, I, again, I come back to it depends on the client, right? We're, we're all at Capital Group. We're dealing with different clients, but ultimately it all ends with the end investor. So maybe that gives a little bit of context as well. Thank you, Richard. Um, it looks like we've got Alondra Moraz that has a live question. Alondra, feel free to come on video or ask your question. Hi, thank you. I think this question is for uh, Samuel. Um, given that the new COVID investors, all the people that started investing during COVID, sort of shifted the market, and it seems like fundamentals haven't mattered the last eight months, how is capital addressing this, and or do is there even a knowledge of this? Thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, so we're not going to get into a lot of kind of investment thematics and, and things uh, on this particular call, but what I will tell you just high level is that's that's the beauty of Capital Group is we're objective based. And so we focus more on the objectives of the client and helping the advisors and helping your clients align their investment choices based on the objectives uh, of our individual funds and, and, and our other products such as SMAs and et cetera. So uh, you, yes, there, there has been some of that, but again, we focus on long-term investing here at Capital and helping keep uh, clients on track with their overall objectives such as retirement or, or in many other things. Awesome, thank you, Richard. All right, let's go back to our Q&A in our chat. 
Um, we've got one question that's, are there prerequisite licensing requirements for the sales role? Yes, for the sales role, yeah, there's the, uh, the pre-licensing, uh, there is a requirement for licensing. It's the SIE 7 and 66, and, um, but you don't have to have those before applying uh, for many of the roles. So uh, that's part of our onboarding and development program that we have. Uh, we give time for folks to get licensed, uh, and then we put them through an extensive training to help get you onboarded. Uh, the training itself uh, is a 12-week program where we leverage a pr uh, learn, practice, apply uh, format where you spend some time learning. You spend some time practicing the content, and then you actually apply it in a training environment. So we, we do all that up front uh, to get you well prepared to be able to do the role at a high level. Thank you. Um, another question that we have, how has Capital Group pivoted from the start of the pandemic to make more productive changes in its corporate structure? Yeah, I, I can take that one. Um, so there's been a lot of focus. There's always focus on productivity. Um, you know, when we think about um, our capacity to run the business and to grow, um, you know, we're, we're always looking at creative ways to invest in um, our resources to increase our capacity to do more. Um, and so that, um, I'll say is a bit of a focus for us now. Um, you know, there's a lot of really exciting investment opportunities for the organization. Um, when you look at technology, um, and the various capabilities that we are looking to deploy to improve, um, experience, the experiences for our investors and the advisors who are working directly with them. Um, you know, the challenge that we have is that we can't do it all. Uh, we can't do it all at once um, and we have to prioritize. And so um, I'll say that since I've joined, at least within the, the last eight months, there's been a, a big focus on uh, trying to increase our capacity and find creative ways to increase our capacity while also being very intentional about prioritizing the initiatives and the capabilities that we want to develop. Um, again, to the end of securing our future and then, you know, continuing to improve um, our products on behalf of our, our investors here. Thank you, Sam. Let's take over to our Ali Mithiwala. Hi, thank you guys so much uh, for, for speaking and providing your insights. Uh, greatly appreciate that. Uh, just one quick question I have, it's really open to everyone here. Um, so with all the roles that you've mentioned, whether it be within client services, global finance, or sales team, for instance, uh, what are some challenges you may see someone entering one of those roles may face? I can take that for client services. Um, and, and please, others, chime in here. But for client services, I think challenges would be, um, you know, a lot of folks come in with kind of zero knowledge of what is even a mutual fund. And so um, they depend on us to ensure that they receive that, that um, training and knowledge of products and services that we offer, which we, I believe, have a very robust um, training capable of teaching someone like me who initially thought I was interviewing for Capital One. So that should show you that everyone can learn about Capital Group and what we offer. Um, the other challenge may also be, you know, um, sometimes working with um, financial professionals and investors can be, um, it, 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 the, the roles that I have in my department are phone-based. So some associates might feel challenged that they are sort of on a call um, after call after call. Is it a true sort of call center environment? I get that question a lot when I speak with um, potential candidates. And what I would tell them is, I, I don't think that our environment is a typical call center environment, um, more because we don't kind of stress or coach to ensuring you have a set number of calls you have to answer. We focus on our quality of interaction with each individual that we connect with. And I, I think that makes the difference between what is a sort of true call center versus what we like to um, say we have is, which is a consultative approach. We want to make sure we spend the time with our customers um, to ensure that we meet their needs um, without the sort of stress and worry about those, let's hit every single call at three minutes a call. 
So um, I think Richard said it earlier, we, we are a consultative group post and pre-sale. I'll, I'll add into what I feel like are challenges for early career folks coming into a, a job and maybe haven't had the experience of corporate culture. So I, I think that in and of itself is a challenge, right? Is just understanding how to operate, understanding how to leverage um, your peers, how to leverage your manager. So I, th I think really as you enter into a totally new environment that maybe you've you know, for me, I've had part-time jobs in restaurants. It's a very different type of environment than coming into a corporate environment. So it's just sometimes navigating um, just something new. And I think for folks who have joined in, with us in our last year, we've all been remote. So I think that is a little bit of a steeper uphill battle to manage through as we don't have like in-office interactions. Um, that can be challenging, but again, the way that we have set up our you know, entry-level positions. What's great about our summer role is that we have um, cohorts of prior summer associates who now are at Capital full-time. There is a lot of thought and care into onboarding. Um, there's a lot of supportive interactions through your manager and your direct team. So I think there's a lot that um, can be challenging for someone just adapting to corporate culture when they haven't before. Here at Capital, we're mindful of that, especially with entry-level roles. And there's immediate buddy system and mentoring available, at least in investment operations, because we know about that. Um, and it may be challenging in, in a virtual environment, but I think we, we've gotten better over this last year of really kind of learning from that and being thoughtful of how we build interaction to make sure there's still social interactions and there's no in-person happy hours, but what are we doing for fun? How are we still building connection and, and, and fostering that kind of collaborative environment in a virtual setting? Thank you, Stacey, and thanks, Suzanne. Ellie, great question. Looks like we've got one more question. Um, is beginning in a CSA type position the best way to gain a good foundation for a career in investment management or a career in finance in general? I'm not I'm not part of that group, but I'm, I'm assuming that's the client service associate. Um, and what I would say, just from the sales component, we've had a number of associates that have joined um, in the client service side of the business and, and worked their way through client service into sales. And you, the difference is, is truly amazing because you get a perspective of dealing with the end investor in that role. Uh, and that's just something that, that stays with you. And you get to learn a lot of the kind of behind the scenes thing of how all of the service aspects work, which plays a huge portion uh, in the sales component. We, we could not do what we do in sales without the great partners we have in our service. And we've had many associates who have come from our service uh, side of the business into our sales group who are now actually out in the field as external wholesalers. So uh, I would say yes. Thank you, Richard. And thank you all for such great, thoughtful questions today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, definitely speaks to how prepared you all came. So thank you again. And our panelists, thank you so much. I know we are at the top of the hour right now. Um, so again, I'd like to thank each of you for joining today's event. Um, as a follow-up after this call, you should be expecting to receive an email providing you with some links for our opening, um, our open opportunities, along with um, reminding you to check out our Way Up page for all of our early career openings that are um, posted there and our most up-to-date information. So thank you again. And of course, like with our recruiters, you are more than welcome to look for any of us on LinkedIn. We're happy to connect with you um, after this meeting and answer any other questions you might have for us. So thanks, 